welcome to the Church of St. Peter and St. Paul West Clandon, particularly if it's your first time here with us. After the service, we've got refreshments. I, there was a, an electrical problem, but I imagine, is it, is it sorted out? It's all good to go. So we do have refreshments after the service. Please do, please do stay behind uh, for those. Everything that you need for the service today can be found on, in this book, which is our morning worship booklet, and in our weekly news sheet, which has the readings and hymns for today. As we gather, we remember that we are in God's presence, and we keep a moment of quiet as we remember that God is here with us. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. So as we gather to worship Almighty God, we stand to sing our first hymn, which can be found on page three of your weekly news sheet. Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. We have come together in the name of Christ to pray, to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. And so as we gather to worship, let us remember that we come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden, to ask for his forgiveness and for his peace. We sit or kneel to pray.
most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love bring you back to himself, forgive you your sins, and assure you of his eternal love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful towards those who fear him. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Let us pray. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations, to you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. We now stand to sing our psalm, which can be found on page four of your weekly news sheets, Psalm 15. be seated for our first Bible reading. God was pleased to have all 
Thanks be to God. We turn now to page 22 of our orders of service for our canticle, the Benedictus, on page 22 of our orders of service. We stand to sing. Heavenly realms, one for 
Please sit for our second Bible reading. Thanks be to God. We turn now to the responsory, which can be found on page six. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. (coughs) Many people find this morning's Gospel reading quite frustrating, even a little bit upsetting. Here we have two sisters One is busy trying to make her guests feel at home, eager to show love through providing food, sweating over the kitchen fire. If you think that this week is going to be hot in Surrey, my goodness, it's nothing in comparison to a kitchen in first century Bethany. Chopping, boiling, stirring, frying over a roaring open fire in a small room in the Middle Eastern heat. It would have been quite unbearable you would have needed the stamina of somebody who has lots of stamina to to cope with it. This would have been hard, hot work, and Martha is doing absolutely everything her culture would have expected of her. She was busy offering hospitality to her guest. While she's doing that, her sister, Mary, is sitting on a rug having a chat about religion. The harder Martha worked, the more oblivious Mary seems to be to the heat of the kitchen, lost in conversation. Have you ever been there? You're at home cooking dinner for everyone else, and they are there paying attention to the much more pressing need of catching up with one another or watching a sporting event on the television. I know who I feel more sympathy for in this reading. It's Martha, surely. Surely Martha is the one that we should be backing up. We should be on her side. Come on, Mary, get up and get cracking. Help your sister out. She's sweating away in the kitchen. And this is what makes this gospel reading so upsetting or annoying or frustrating for people because this is precisely what the Lord doesn't do. We are all busy people and probably, I'm guessing, if you're anything like me, you find it more natural to serve God by doing stuff, by doing practical things, than by sitting down for hours on end and praying or reading or worshipping. And it can be really hard when someone, even if that person is the Lord Jesus Christ, can be really hard when someone seems to pour cold water over our hard work by suggesting that it is less worthy than being lost in religious devotion. Some people read this story that way. 
as Christ's judgment that the best way to be his disciple is to devote yourself to prayer and study. That the life of stillness and prayer or contemplation, as the Christian tradition has known it, the life of contemplation is inherently more godly and worthwhile than the active life, the life of doing stuff to help people practically. There it is. Mary and Martha prove it, don't they? The trouble with reading the scene at the home of Mary and Martha in Bethany this way is that it ignores the story which immediately precedes it. If you go home and look in Luke's Gospel, you will see with your own eyes the story that precedes it is the story of the Good Samaritan in which two religious people, a Pharisee and a Levite, presumably very pious, prayerful, models of the contemplative life, are condemned because their piety didn't bring about actions of charity and hospitality. Faith, even very devoted faith, without action, is empty, dead even. And so those two stories, the story of the Good Samaritan and the story of Mary and Martha in their home at Bethany, work together to say to us, be very careful. Don't go to one extreme or to the other, but plot that careful course between the two. Neither utter absorption in religious devotion nor frenetic activity which is distracted, but carefully following the Lord Jesus in showing love to all and being devoted to God. So I don't think that this story of Mary and Martha declares the unworthiness of the active, practical devotion of, Mar of the Marthas of this world. Actually, when you read the story carefully, Martha's work, her activity, is never judged negatively. This is not a rebuke on her actions or an attempt to say that there is only one proper kind of religious devotion, giving up on, on work and being a prayerful student. The story doesn't teach us that there is only one type of devotion, not one type of devotion. The story does teach us that there is only one object of devotion, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. When our service, whatever that service may be, whether it's cleaning or cooking or doing the coffee or being on the PCC or praying fervently or studying or doing any of those things which we might see as acts of service or preaching, for goodness sake, that can be a distraction. Um, whatever it may be, whatever it is, our service, if it loses that basic orientation towards Jesus Christ, becomes problematic. It becomes a distraction something drawing us away from the one true focus of human life, Jesus Christ and the God who is revealed in him. We see this really clearly in verse 40. You don't have the verse numbers, but I'm going to read it to you anyway. I'll tell you, I'll tell you it's verse 40. You'll have to believe me. In verse 40, where we read these words, Martha was distracted by her many tasks. Now, the Greek word translated as tasks. I don't expect you to know any Greek, but I'm going to, again, I'm going to tell you it just so you're going to have to trust me. The Greek word for tasks is actually the word in the New Testament, which is used for ministry, for what I'm doing here, for what Helen does. It's the Greek word diakonion, which, from which we get the word deacon, a, a minister in the church. Martha was distracted by her ministry. She was distracted by the things that she was doing for God. She was distracted by her religious devotion. Who knew that being religious could be a distraction from God? She was distracted by her devotion, albeit that it manifested itself through practical work. Her pious devotion to duty, to showing hospitality to so great a guest, had become a goal in itself rather than the means by which she would show her love for God. Her task of serving God had taken her eye from God, who was seated in the next room talking to her sister. Her worry 
and distraction prevented her from truly attending to Jesus Christ. In fact, out of worry about offering adequate hospitality, she even breaks the rules of hospitality by placing her guest on the spot and accusing him of not caring about her. Don't you care about me? I'm sweating away in the kitchen and you're out here having a nice chat about the deeper meaning of life. Martha's business, her bi- what she's doing in the kitchen, her work, isn't condemned per se. It is condemned, though, because it is rooted in anxiety and in an, in an inability to rest in Christ, in God, who is there with her. That's why Mary had chosen the better part, not because sitting on a rug and listening to Jesus is inher- inherently better, but because Mary had grasped that all of our service everything we do, whatever that service may be, all of our labor, all of our striving after God must ultimately end in resting in the one on whom our life depends at every single moment. To seek after God, but to fail to rest in him when we find him because we've come to love the seeking more than the one that we seek. That has to be ultimate folly, surely. Should we condemn Martha? Not too much. Not least because I think each and every one of us is rather a lot more like Martha than we are like Mary, and so we need to see in her ourselves. But just as the Pharisee and the Levite warn us that religion without action is dead, so Martha serves as an important warning that endless religious activity which does not rest in Jesus Christ will ultimately bring about frustration, exhaustion, and ultimately spiritual decay. Now, in a small church like ours, we are all busy. Every, pretty much everyone here is or has been um, on, PC, on the PCC, I think, at some point, or on some kind of church committee, um, we've been, we're all busy constantly keeping the show on the road. We're all busy coming in and cleaning and helping out with the graveyard. There's 101 practical tasks. Nigel making sure that the electrics are working um, before the service when they go a bit haywire. Um, we're all incredibly busy. We've got lots on our plates. Busy keeping the show on the road. There's so much to do. But when we feel worn down by it all, as we all do, may we not lose hold of the reason for our work, which is not ultimately to keep the show on the road. May we not lose hold of the fact that we work, we do what we do to express our love, our delight, our devotion to the Lord Jesus Christ. Better to ditch the work than to lose sight of him. Amen. We stand to declare our faith in Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sit or kneel for our prayers. Let us pray.
promise through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us as we pray in faith. Lord, help us to rest a while in the cooling shade of your presence. Blow down our restless hearts and fill us with gentle compassion for all your people. Let the sun climb be for us a time of song and reflection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Lord of Lords and King of Kings, we ask you to guide and strengthen all statesmen, leaders and rulers, especially Elizabeth, our Queen. Grant all of the King authority, wisdom, courage and compassion. We pray for peace on your troubled earth. Hear our prayer. We pray for our own community, for the places where we work, and for our homes and those whom we love. Make us mindful that all our lives depend on the work of others, and help us to live thankfully and in unity as members of one human family. We pray for those who are finishing school or university in our next time. Especially those for whom this is their last term. May the future be for them a time of new beginnings without losing old friendships. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage, Lord, to all who are ill and all who are afraid for their future. Knowing that you are our strength and salvation, we commend to your loving care all who Pray for those for whom the hot weather brings discomfort or danger. In our own community, we pray particularly for Hilary McKinnon, Delia and Richard Baker, Jean Foy, Pamela Backham, Richard Perkins, Kathy McMullen, Moira Maker. Give them courage and hope in their time, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. And in particular, we pray for the repose of the soul of Michael John Kirk, who died recently. And we remember John Porter, Ian Atkinson, Jane O'Brien.
hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Joining our prayers together in one, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you again for worshipping with us this morning. Please do stay behind after the service for refreshments, which will be served from the back of the church. Um, We've got tea and coffee, and we've probably got something colder as well if you're not in the mood for a hot drink. Um, But please do stay behind after the service. Thank you for everyone who's contributed to our service this morning, to uh, Bethany and Richard and to Steve uh, for readings and prayers. Hugh, thank you very much for uh, making sure the live stream went out. Thank you to Angela, who I think we should give a round of applause to. Angela has stepped in uh, as um, deputy organist, uh, as Sebastian's not here today. So thank you so much, Angela, for doing that. Um, And thank you to Alison for providing refreshments and Nigel for making sure the electrics are working. Um, There are a couple of things to look at in your weekly news sheet which I'll draw your attention to. The first and most important is uh, save the date for our Harvest Festival. You may think that we're getting in there early, but you know, better to do that than late. Um, which is on the 2nd of October. Please do put the date in your diary. We've got a harvest service here at 10.30 in the morning, and then we have a harvest lunch, which is a great opportunity to get to know people and enjoy some really lovely food at the British Legion Poppy Room at 12.30. So please do note that, stick it on your fridge, get in touch with Ingrid or Petria. Petria has got her hand in the air. Um, If you would like to uh, speak to anyone about the harvest uh, lunch, to get in touch to, um, to find out more. The second thing is that um, East Clandon Church received a couple of years ago now a very generous bequest, a, a, a legacy, with a very firm legal restriction on it, which said that it could only be used for the purposes of provide, uh, providing for an organ scholar, um, ideally a young person, um, to learn how to and to grow in their confidence as an organist. Uh, we advertised before the pandemic, then the pandemic got in the way and we're now getting back on with it and advertising. So there is an advert in the weekly news sheet for an organ scholarship. Um, It's administered by the PCC of East Clandon, but please do share this with any young people, particularly young people. It's open to all, but it's not a a princely sum that you get every year, so it's not something that everyone will be interested in, but for a young person, something pretty good uh, perhaps. Um, do share the advert with them. It would be really great to get some applicants. We're planning to have auditions in uh, September. So there's a little bit of time for people to think about whether it's for them and to get their application together um, and send it to Sebastian for consideration. And um, hopefully we'll get a decent number of people applying to that role. We're now going to stand to sing our final hymn, which can be found on... There's no offertory hymn, Um, that's a hangover from last week a bit of a mistake the final hymn can be found on page 7 of your weekly news sheets love divine all loves excelling and during the singing of this hymn we take up a collection for the work of God's church here in West Clandon Thank you. 
So we join together in the um, final prayer at the top of page 10 of our orders of service. Eternal God, light of the minds that know you, joy of the hearts that love you, and strength of the wills that serve you, grant us so to know you that we may truly love you, so to love you that we may truly serve you, whose service is perfect freedom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.